up until like he was 11 months old, 11 and a half months old, you know, that's when things started going different, yeah. We were watching TV and he's crawling around on the floor and then all of a sudden he just stopped crawling and he was just limp on the floor and I was like, Damien, what are you doing? And he didn't look at me, didn't move, didn't do anything. And I had no idea what was going on. Damien, are you having a seizure? Damien? Hey, Moz. You all right? It was actually quite scary. It did make me really upset and cry when he did have the seizures, but after a while I got used to it. And when mum would just say on the lounge, oh, Damien, 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 I'll just rush into Damien's room, pack his bag for the ambulance because I already know what's going to happen. I met Tina in year five, um, the end of year five, and we became really, really good friends. We were best friends. And when she, like, put up about SUDEP, oh, I had no idea what it was. So I Googled it, I searched it, you know, I looked everything up. What we mean when we talk about SUDEP is we are talking about sudden, unexpected deaths in epilepsy. SUDEP happens um, to people without any warning, people that have epilepsy, but they're otherwise quite well. You know, they're taking their medication, they're well, and they will suddenly um, die with no other apparent reason, um, usually in their sleep. Um, it certainly is something that has a higher incidence in early adult life and probably particularly in young adult males, but it can affect anybody with epilepsy at any age and we have seen that quite clearly. I think particularly for young people there'd be a lot more awareness about um, lifestyle factors, you know, getting enough sleep, not drinking alcohol. It is a really frightening concept to know that people can die from epilepsy and from seizures. And I don't think that really cemented in my mind until I started working with Epilepsy Action and learnt about CDEP itself. I think that most people, even those affected by epilepsy, are not aware that SUDEP is a possibility. Um, very sadly, you know, they learn about it when they lose someone. I think it's also more the shock of it all. Yeah. You know, it's not knowing that this could happen, we yeah. were like shocked. We had no idea what was going on. We had nothing. You know, we were always left in. Pretty what much it, in the dark. Yeah. We know that the principal driver of SUDEP is having seizures, and we know that if you are not having seizures, that your risk of SUDEP is negligible. It's about one in a thousand people um, with epilepsy that will die from SUDEP. I have most of my seizures nocturnally, most of my grand mal seizures nocturnally, like in my sleep, which is, you know, not a good thing <laughs> because I, you know, I don't know they're coming. It's having frequent nighttime tonic clonic seizures or nighttime seizures where you're not aware of how to control your airway and breathing, there's probably the greatest risk for SUDEP. So, I mean, I've now lost three, like, three people that I know have passed, so I've passed away from SUDEP. It's a bit scary because my mum has epilepsy and that could possibly happen to her, which would be really, really horrible for our family. I mean, the most important thing with um, trying to prevent SUDEP is trying to prevent seizures. So if seizures can be brought under control through medication or other lifestyle changes, then, then that's the best thing that somebody can, can possibly do. Because Damien suffered from clusters, like he'd have, if he had one, he would have a few to follow. Other than the seizures, he, his health was fine. He, was stable. He died only like every six months, like clock. It was like clockwork. Uh, the management of a seizure um, for young people who are, for example, in school involves um, usually is usually best supported when you have a se written seizure management plan. When we lose a child, is it's one of the worst things as a, a principal of a school you ever want. It's not a regular thing that you have children pass away. But when you do, it does affect the whole school community, and it did affect us here. He always brought a smile to people's faces, whether it was out in the playground, whether it was in assembly or during the national anthem. When he started um, at Kingswood South, he had to have a seizure plan. They, that's what they wanted, you know, what to do if this happened, what the signs of, you know, the seizures were. 
it's really important that not only do we receive that information to support the kid, but that, yeah, the parents and carers do take on, you know, anything that, that teachers provide them with about, you know, their day-to-day -day interactions at school that may go towards their management plan. And some people do everything right and self-manage their epilepsy as best as possible and may still experience pseudep. 10% of all SUDEP deaths are witnessed. And these typically tend to be a witnessed seizure event, uh, which then uh, evolves into uh, breathing cessation. There was nothing different at all. Like, I'd gotten up out of bed and Kaylee had made him some toast. And um, so I went in and had a shower and I came out, I gave him his medication at eight o'clock in the morning, which is normal. He was dressed for school already and um, he was dancing. He wanted to, to dance with the Xbox. And then um, he came and sat down next to me. He was a bit out of breath, which is really weird from him because he could dance for hours. And I'm like, you know, Damien, are you all right? And he's like, I'm scared. And I said, why? And he goes, I don't know. And then straight away he was just blank. And because he's always blank, you know, when he has a moment, that's what I thought it was. It was just a weird seizure. And then I noticed he was struggling to breathe. The lips were going a bit blue, so I called the ambulance up. And I told him he's not breathing properly. Check here, tell me when he's breathing, say yes when he's breathing, when you see him take a breath. And I'm like, all right, so I did that. And she's like, it's, he's not breathing properly, you need to get him on the floor. I got him down there and they said I had to perform CPR on him. And I tried to do that and kept trying and kept trying and trying. And then finally the ambulance came and knocked on the door and I just screamed at him, come in, like, you know, don't knock on the goddamn door, come in. And they came in and told me I had to leave the room and they were doing whatever they had to do and I had to sit in my room. I just had to sit and wait. And then I called Mark. Mark raced from work, you know. Kaylee was at school and that's where I left her, I didn't, you know want to bother her with anything, you know. It was uh, my second class, so second period. I got a note sent to me, and um, I automatically thought, yeah, Damien had a seizure. I need to go to the hospital and help out. But my auntie came and picked me up, and I saw her eyes all red. I knew she was crying, so I knew something was up. I kept asking her, but she didn't tell me. I had to wait outside uh, my office. Because at that time, he had... He was gone, but she didn't know. My sister didn't want to say anything. But he was gone at the time that she went to get Kaylee. Yeah. In my experience, all the families I've spoken to, they have not been aware of SUDEP. And some of the families are really angry that they weren't told about SUDEP. Some of them are just wanting to channel as much energy into making sure other families learn about SUDEP and know about it. Not once were we ever told of SUDEP until he died. And I spoke to the coroner and they said, oh, so far we haven't found anything, um, but it looks like it was SUDEP. And I'm like, what's SUDEP? And then they told me it was sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. I guess one of the, the challenges for um, neurologists is that we all feel very concerned about SUDEP, but we often struggle to know how much weight to put on that discussion with different families and different individuals because we also know that it is a scary discussion. I think there's a general reluctance to tell people about SUDEP. Um, some doctors will tell their patients, but many won't. And I think the reason is that they don't want to scare them. It's my view that it is an important discussion to have at the time of diagnosis of the epilepsy. And the reason for that is uh, the importance of understanding, you know, the risk factors for SUDEP um, and uh, how to prevent or reduce the risk of SUDEP is something that's really relevant as soon as you start having seizures. I guess it's, it would have been hard either way, you know, of losing him. But if we, as I said, if we'd known, you know, I'm sure the, sh the shock wouldn't have been as powerful, you know what I mean? Like, would be not accept things, but I guess understand it to move forward. What Damien um, was diagnosed with, you know, did come with, you know, complications and, and risks, but no one 
before that had, um, had let us know about SUDEP. If we tell people the risks, then they've got an informed choice to make about whether they modify um, their lifestyle or their choices around living with epilepsy. You know, like er everybody turns around and says, oh yeah, life gets better, but it, it doesn't get better, you know? It just, you just try to cope, you know, like, and just try to, like, not, like, move on, but you just try to, um, like, try to cope with your life, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very hard.